Hi, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Foothill Paint Fabrication. Well, today we're back on that 1950 Chevy cab. We, uh, we will be block sanding, dried guide coating, and block sanding some more. So let's just jump right to it and see how all those spot primed areas turned out and uh, see how all our repairs look. Okay, it's the next day, or actually it's two days later. I went fishing yesterday, knocked him dead with my buddy. Uh, it's pretty cool to be fishing this late in the winter. Uh, the work we did right here on the firewall, that all looks really good. We're just going to do some sanding on that to make sure it's all nice and smooth. We've got plenty of primer around these louvers here to try to feather edge this up and all the way around because I stripped these down to bare steel, as you recall. We got the little uh, repair up here, a little dinger. There's one up on top too. And then uh, just back here where we had that paint, uh, several layers of paint feather and edging out, I wanted to make sure to try to seal that up a little bit. And then we've got this area where I sandblasted down to bare steel. Uh, that's a pretty good drop off on paint. So I'm not gonna try to feather edge this all the way back out in both directions. I'm gonna do a little feather edging and filling with primer. So it's probably gonna get another couple of coats of primer before we get this all back up to the right level. If I try to feather edge this out, you will probably see it in uh, the clear. You'll be able to see of the wave right there. Uh, it's just so thick of paint right here. Um, so we're gonna do some filling and feather edging, a little combination there. The other repair up here, Feels really good. Those are super easy to sand. The door jams that I spent probably way too much time on, they look really good. I mean, not perfection, but they all they look really good, way better than they did. Uh, the spot right here, I don't know if you guys recall, but uh, it was pretty, pretty rough right here. So it looks great. And then uh, we got this repair here where we filled the antenna and fixed the spot around where the mirror mounts, and we had that big pitted, rusted, horrible area right here where we had that little hole that we filled with the metal reinforced body filler. So this is looking really good right up through here. I'm really happy with this. I've got a little spot right here that I'm feeling right now and I can't believe I missed that uh, before we got primer on there. But the rest of it feels pretty good. We're going to get some blocking done on that and then some dry guide coats see where we ended up. And then we have the patch panels on the bottom of the cab there and both of those look really good too. So let's get some sanding done. So we're going to start off on this easy one. This is the only one I'm going to show on this. These were just the little dings. Had one over here, one over here. And uh, there's really not much to do uh, other than taking sand scratches out. So I've got the little block. I got some 240 on here. It's got a little blue paint on it from blocking other stuff out. So I'm just going to kind of go around it here because this is the flexible block. And I can flex it around this corner a little bit to make sure we're going to get good transitions. Now, I don't want to do a lot of sanding uh, with the 240 because I don't want to put uh, sand scratches in that I have to go try to take out with something else. But we are going to go ahead and sand the whole cab again. And I can tell you right now that this feels uh, excellent. So it's already feathering out. You can see where it's feathering out and just turning into nothing on the edges. We're just going to hit it that quick. And ideally, that's the way all your repairs should be. But, you know doesn't always work out that way. So that right there with the 240, I'm done with the 240. I've knocked any ridges down, any little uh, dirt or little specks in the primer, and that feels has really good shape. I, it feels the same. If I shut my eyes and run my hand over it, I can't feel anything. So that one's good. I'm going to do the one over here. Um, the step we're going to show mostly is the repairs we did over on the patch panel and then on that uh, antenna area. So this looks good. Let's move the camera around and we'll tackle that other one. All right, so let's go ahead and check this out. I'm gonna use the uh, little thin block again, the flexible one. And I'm just gonna start up here. Kind of like all my repairs, I like to start out on the edge and work my way back to the center of the repair. It just works for me that way. Um, you may do it differently. The end result is all that really matters.
So when I do it this way, it allows me to just kind of uh, go from a known good area to a, you know, area that we were repairing. And it allows me to uh, just kind of keep kind of moving this along to, you know, finish off the whole repair. And that's feeling really good up there. It's obviously going to need some more sanding with some finer sandpaper. But as far as flattening it out, it feels really good. I'm going to run along this lip here to make sure that's nice. And this has a little bit of a radius, so I, I'm kind of hitting it and bouncing. The paper's right up against the edge, and it's kind of folded over a little bit right here on the corner. So it can actually um, kind of roll up there a little bit when I'm sanding. And I just kind of bounce up that, let it bounce off of there. That way I don't sand a uh, groove in here. And I'm going at a little bit of an angle here, you know, 45 degrees or something. So that feels pretty good. So using 240 at this stage is, uh, is a little slower, but it actually uh, keeps me from piling more scratches in this thing. So it's just gonna take a little bit longer. And if I need to, if I front run into a bad spot, like I kind of feel something going on here, but once we get it sanded, we're gonna be able to tell if that's uh, as bad as it feels or if it's just a texture thing. So that's, uh, that's feeling pretty good right there. We've got some scratches right here. I can feel them, but it feels flat. And we've got something going on here. So I'm gonna have to switch up to a little bit coarser sandpaper so I don't push too hard trying to get this out because that's when you'll start distorting your block or I'm not gonna distort the sheet metal here. It's a pretty good radius, so there's really no way to bend that. But I wanna move up to a little coarser block and then lightly sand this to bring the shape uh, perfect and then we can move back to something finer. Okay, I put a fresh piece of uh, Peel and Stick 120 on here. It's very fresh, so this, uh, this 240 was a little bit uh, worn out. So what I'm gonna do is, I don't know if you guys can see, but I'm gonna bend this over this edge a little bit, and this is just another Dura block. It's just one of the small ones. Has a little bit of flex to it, but not a lot. So I'm gonna work from here around this corner right here to try to get this all worked out. And I'll be going at an angle a little bit and bouncing off that edge. And I'm not pushing very hard. Just kind of let it glide over the top. I want to break this off a little bit. And then I think we'll get some dry guide coat on here and uh, it'll really show up what's going on. Scratches. Uh, low spots or anything I didn't get right. So I can actually see, I, you guys probably can't see it, but I've got the light right here. There's a low spot right there I can see for sure. So we'll see if we can sand that out. These, uh, these stampings have a natural kind of a weird wave here that kind of puckers up right at the uh, seam. I think they seamed it right here with the leading, and so there's always a little kind of a weird spot right there. So let's keep sanding this right here, so if we've got enough to get this right. Definitely got a spot right there. So I'm gonna work that a little bit more. And got some spots in here. I'm gonna hit it with this uh, 120 a little bit more and then we'll switch back to the 240. I can see something right here. I'm gonna go ahead and just hit a little bit more and then we're gonna use some uh, dry guide coat on it. All right, let's put some dry guide coat on it and then uh, see what's really going on. I feel two or three things right here. Okay, right off the bat, you can see Got some pretty heavy sand scratches right here. 
and I was going this way with that uh, 120 so I know that's from uh, that's underneath now this is pretty flat here because you can see the guide coat smoothed out pretty nicely uh, but we got a line here and we got some lines going on here so I'm gonna go ahead and hit it with the 120 again lightly and see what happens Okay, so now we can clearly see what's going on here. Um, I've got a couple of, uh, just a transition line right here that's going to come out really easy. And uh, low spot there, and a couple of weird spots here. So we're going to go ahead and keep sanding. We've got some primer. We've got blue coming through. It's not a concern. Uh, these were spot primes. The idea was to get it straight, not leave it ready for uh, color and clear. So I'm going to keep sanding right here. So that little thing we had going on there actually sanded out with the primer, which was nice. Got a little something going on here, and we've got some other stuff here, but these are a lot of scratches and stuff from previous sanding. So I'm going to switch back from the 120, and we're going to go to the 240. All right, we're chasing it down pretty good. All we really have left is some scratches and a little, uh, pretty sure the repair was here and then we had some paint, so it's probably a transition. So we'll see if we can sand that out. Okay, so now uh, <laughs> it feels really good. I thought I was going to have to refill a few of these spots, but it just goes to show you what that polyester high build primer will do. Uh, it's not the only uh, tool in the toolbox, that's for sure. There's plenty of other high build type uh, primers out there you can use. Uh, I like this one. Uh, it sands well and uh, it sticks really, really well. So that feels really good to me. Really good. So we're, we're pretty much done on this. We're going to sand it with some finer sandpaper. Uh, the whole cab's going to get primered again, so I'm not too worried about leaving 240 grit uh, uh, sand scratches in it. But uh, this, comes out, this came out really nice. I like it. Okay, I don't know if you guys can see that, but there is some pretty heavy lips right here of feather edging, or not even really feather edging. Sandblasted it, cleaned it up, uh, sanded it down inside the groove. I got the etching primer up down inside that groove to make sure that it was uh, sealed deep down inside. Then we got multiple coats of uh, polyester primer over the top of it. And now we're, what we need to do is sand these ledges down a little bit and uh, remove some of this extra primer around back to blue. And then we'll probably, we're gonna have to do it again. So uh, it's just the way, this is such a short transition. I would have to take this up past this line here to get this done. I just don't want to do it. I'd rather just concentrate on this one little area. We're going to be using the 120 on this block right here. And I'm looking down the block and it looks pretty flat right now. So the idea is just for me to sand like this and not hit down inside there. I just want to hit on the ridges. I can go through pretty quickly um, down lower because I focused just right on here when I was spraying.
I'm going to go ahead and put some uh, guide coat on here, uh, just not for me, just for you guys so you can see that a little more clearly. I guess it wouldn't hurt me either, but I can see it pretty good with the light. So now you can clearly see the transition from the multiple layers of paint to no paint at all. So we'll just keep sanding. The idea is for all this gray to go away and just have gray down in there and then just a transition of gray back to the old paint. As you notice, I'm, I'm still going, you know, like this at angles instead of just going along the edge of that lip of paint because all that would do would put uh, a bunch of fat, uh, flat facets as I go around. So the idea is for me to round this back to the shape of the cab instead of just trying to make that uh, some sort of ramp. I'm putting moderate pressure on the block to get it speed up and there's a lot of primer hitting the ground around it right now so we're moving some primer with this 120 and we got some blue showing up here so we know uh, this is the original and then that is the area we're trying to transition and it's actually looking pretty good because there's no gu guide coat in there so I'm going to fade away from this I got a little spot here I need to work on And that's more of the tip here. So obviously we have a spot right here. It's barely pronounced. A little dip right there. This came in together really nice right here. Get a little low spot there, but that feels good too. And I really don't feel that transition anymore from the paint to the primer. So that's good. And we've got a little divot right there. So I'm just going to keep sanding a little bit. We're going to get, we're going to have to put another coat of primer on here and sand it again before the whole cab gets primed. But what I'll do is I'll just kind of wait on that and I'll get to work on something else. And when I've got some primer in the gun, then I'll just jump over here real quick. And we'll bust that out. And I don't want to leave any of this primer down here because the idea was to build this up to the height of the blue. If we leave the primer on here, it's just making the, this part of the cab even taller. Even if it's on, you know, the microscopic level, I still don't want it there. There was no dent here. It was just rusted. And just like that, coming together nicely. Now, why this is staying here, I don't know, but I'm not going to try to get that out because obviously I've sanded quite a bit and this little strip of primer wants to stay. It's feathered out to nothing here, so that's no big deal. Kind of a chunk got filled right there. So we're looking really good. There's a little bit of line right here, and that's just because I haven't been sanding up that high. This divot right here is a problem. I'm going to have to clean that out. That's just going to have to get more primer, or I'm going to have to feather this out way but a lot longer that way. And we'll do a little bit more sanding right there to see what happens like we did on this one and then see what happens. And if it doesn't want to start coming away, then we'll stop. And by bringing this part down here, it's actually starting to pull that away. So I'm going to go ahead and keep going. It looks like it's going to work out. Okay, that looks pretty good right there. It may not look good on camera, but to me, feeling it feels pretty darn good. Now we do need to put another coat of primer on here. I'm not implying that it's done by any means, but we made a, a, a huge step in getting that filled back up where we want it. Now doing the top, I'm going to have to get out here in front of the camera because uh, I'm right-handed. So uh, it's going to be just like the bottom here. I'm just going to sand the same way. 
Um, we just have a little bit uh, tighter radius right on this thing, so I'm going to be careful. But this line was a lot tighter than this one came down a lot more, so I'm going to have to be careful how I do it and concentrate on the ends, make sure they feather together really nice, and then keep sanding until all that uh, guide coat's out of there. And then I may guide coat it again and use a little bit finer sandpaper. So let me uh, jump in front of the camera here and knock this out real quick, and then I'll bring you back. Okay, I got the top done and it actually came together a lot nicer than the bottom did. Uh, maybe when I was sandblasting it, uh, or this, there's more paint on this side, thicker, I don't know. But it, it feels really good. Now down inside this groove here, I know you guys can't see it, but there's some pits. Uh, because remember that was blistered and rusted inside there. So when I blasted all the paint and rust out, it left pits behind. So what I'm going to do is, I've got some 240 on my uh, body filler spreader right here. And what I did was, it's peel and stick, so I just stuck it on the edge. Then I took a razor blade and I just trimmed it off flush. So it's not gonna be pushing down inside there, uh, eating away at all the other work we did to seal that. But what, it, what I wanted to do is just kind of ride on this lip right here and try to smooth some of these uh, divots out or you know pits or whatever. So I'm just gonna kind of lay it on here. Sometimes I'll use a putty knife. In this instance, I'll use this, it's nice and big. And I'm using 240 instead of uh, 120 is because we're working on an edge here and I don't wanna be uh, grinding right back down to bare steel instantly. So I'm just gonna kinda glide it and as I do it, I'll start like this and then I'll lower the angle and then I'll go back and forth, then I'll lower the angle again and I'll go back and forth just to try to you know, make this smoother down inside there. Now this, uh, this line on this cab Look at that, boy that came out really quick. Just with that 240, you can see where it was sanding right there. So it cleaned it up really fast. So all I have to do now is just flip this over and do the same thing on this side. And this is a good way to sand these grooves on these old Chevy trucks anyways, to make sure you get a good sand down inside there. And it just gives us a nice transition and I can take some of those uh, pits out with this <laughs> without sanding all the uh, material off down inside. If I just folded a piece of sandpaper in half and jammed it in there and sanded, it's just gonna follow whatever contours. So we've got some pretty good, pretty good ones right here. I don't know if I'll be able to get those out, but let's give it a shot. There's a few right here. From here down, it's good. We got a few right here. So those are coming out. We've got a uh, two or three right here. Kind of a long one right there. Let's keep sanding. I don't see any. Um, I don't see any sealer underneath there coming through. So we've got still got a little bit of room. I did lay quite a bit of primer on here, knowing that I was going to have pits to fill, fill, and then sand away. So I'm just kind of rocking it back and forth, rolling it up as I go, <laughs> trying to get those out. Now this whole line along here has got some kind of you know, jagged edges inside of it and stuff. I'm trying to smooth it out the best I could before I primed, but this is really starting to come together nice. I think it's going to need another coat of primer, but I'm going to keep working on it here real quick. I don't want to give up early. Okay, that feels pretty good. What I'm going to do now is going to peel this off and we're going to move it down and we're going to fold it over this edge 
and just lightly hit that. So I got that pulled on tight since we got all the all of them out, but there's some down in the bottom there that I can't get going either direction, so I actually need to get that in there, down in there, and I'm going to go lightly. That feels pretty good. I'm liking it. There's one little spot right here that I don't think I'm going to be able to get out. And we'll probably have to get some more primer on that and then sand that out later. But all in all, this came out way better than I had hoped. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get some of this extra primer off here with some 240. Uh, so we don't have heavy build up here for no reason. And other than that, this feels pretty good. Once I get the, another coat of spot prime on here and get this sanded without all these transitions, then uh, we'll know for sure how, it really, how it's really going to turn out in color and clear. So that one's pretty much done. A little bit more work, and that's it. Okay, the louver is about the last thing, major thing to do on our repairs here is uh, check the feather edge on both sides. Now, I took it down to bare steel on all over this whole area, and then we're just feathering it up here and down here. So I've got the 120 once again, and uh, I, I do know I have a line right here. Uh, a paint so I'm just going to be careful and we're just going to kind of sand along here and then I'm going to put some guide coat on it. Okay, so I'm going to just hit it real light. Um, I can see the lines already. And when I sanded this back, I brought it all the way up here. So there's actually some lines up all the way up here on one of the steps of the different layers of paint. So I've, I'm looking pretty good right there. Now this louver is not, uh, since it's the last one, it's not shaped exactly like the others because it's following this panel. And then it's a little low right here. And I don't, I don't know if I should push it out. Looking down the line right here, this thing is perfectly straight, just like this panel. So if I go pushing out on it, I'm afraid the panel's going to take, uh, take a distortion. So I'm going to go ahead and sand that out across here. It's probably not that low leaving the guide coat behind. And we're getting a little bit of green paint showing through right there. It's uh, the second paint job on this. It was red first, then green, then I think a blue or two coats of blue above on top of that. So. That's, that's feeling really good. We got a little something going on here. I'll need a small, tiny block to flatten out the top of the louver. That louver barely kicks. The rest uh, do about the same, but they've got the part that kinks in. So I'm um, going to need a little tiny block to get that sweetened up. And I'll do all these by hand uh, really carefully. And then all we have to do is do down here. And right here you can see a line kind of waves up and down. That's uh, from the paint. So we're going to go ahead and just keep working that. And it's all gone. We're going to do a little bit right here, around the corner. And I'm not afraid of using the 240 on here, because remember, we. We did some pretty good uh, paint removal on here, so uh, getting this straightened out with the 240, I'm not pushing hard, I'm just letting the sandpaper do its job, and I'm not trying to make it uh, remove a line, I'm just uh, sanding until the line disappears. Because if you just stare at it and push down hard enough, 
you will make that part disappear, but it may not be flat. Well, that looks pretty good. We got a little hoop to do right there, but that's part of the stamping of the louver. It drops it down right there, just like it's going to be on all four corners. So uh, we got one right up here too. But that all looks really good. So I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, I got some hand work to do on these louvers. This one may not be as straight as I want it to be. I think I got a little dip right there. I may have to push on that and then I'll sand it. And then I'll I feel the rest. They all feel really good. So yeah, they feel really good. But this one here, I think I need to do a little bit of straightening. I'll just stick my thumb in there and push out and then I'll sand that. I'll do that off camera. That looks great. I'm really happy the way that came out. I'm really happy. Those louvers are going to look great when the car, when the truck's painted. Okay, that just about wraps up this video on spot priming and sanding these repairs. Now, uh, we got most of them done, and I realized we jumped around quite a bit, but I didn't want to onesie-twosie these uh, and, you know, on this side of it. Uh, the number one thing I want, really want you guys to uh, get from this video is when to spot prime, when to go into prime. Now, when I was younger, I went to prime way too soon. I would, uh, couldn't wait to get the gun in my hand and get some primer on my repair and see how it looked, right? How good or bad it looks. 90% uh, of the time I was way too soon. I was wasting my time. Most of the primary ended up on the ground because I was asking it to do something it wasn't designed for. So that's why I kind of really want you to consider, you know, sanding to, you know, 120, 240 and then stopping there. If you sand too far and get too smooth, it, it can screw up your repair. If you stop too early in the 80 grit, then you're really having to pile that primer on there and you're asking to do something it really isn't designed for. So, uh, you know, 120 or 240 uh, can really get you where you want on your feather edging and shaping. And then you can spot prime and then let the primer do its job. And then you can get it back into your sanding like we did today, where uh, we were able to fix a few low spots, use the guide coating to help expose those. I've got a little more filling to do now, a little straightening to do right here. And then really all these are done. So uh, really just be patient and follow the steps, follow the grits, and then you, your, your repairs are really gonna come out really nice. So thanks for joining me here at Foothill Paint and Fabrication. If you're new to the channel and subscribed yet, I really appreciate it if you would consider doing so. And if you like what you saw, give me that thumbs up. It really helps promote the channel. We'll see you on the next one.